What's going on, people? We are Tottenham TV, back here for some more content for you guys. And today we are going to be discussing the top four race. Now the European schedule has done for the quarterfinals. We kind of know that the coefficient is probably not going to be working in our favour. Never say never. Point. Never say <laughs> never. <laughs> but it's looking very unlikely, let's say, um, with England in third at the moment behind Germany and Italy. I think Opta have currently given it a 1.1% chance. So there's a chance. There is a chance. Basically... <laughs> As for the coefficient for fifth place to be Champions League, essentially Villa need to win all three of their games and I think Germany need to lose all of their games. So. Yeah, because German, there are three German clubs left in it. Dortmund, Bayern, both in separate sides of the draw as well. And Bayer Leverkusen, who knocked out West Ham last night. So, look, it's um, going to be a tall order for England to make that second spot in the coefficient. So it looks like Spurs will have to get that fourth spot if we want to play Champions League football next year. So we're going to have a look at Villa and and Tottenham's running from now until the end of the season. And we're going to make a bit of a prediction about where we think these two clubs are going to end up. Yeah, so at the moment, obviously, Villa have a three-point advantage and a goal difference advantage um, going into the run-in. Uh, we do have a game in hand, so we have six games. They have five games. And the, the run-in does read for interesting reading, I would say. I don't think it's a foregone conclusion. Spurs, for sure, have the tougher games, but Villa's games are by no means easy, I think it's fair to say. Yeah, so if you bring up the fixtures, as you can see in the top four race on screen now, Villa currently on in fourth. Spurs in fifth, they're giving it a 70% possibility rating that Aston Villa will finish in that fourth spot with obviously Spurs with 30%. You're looking at the fixtures on the face of it with the teams that we have left to play. We've got Arsenal, Chelsea, Liverpool, Man City, and then obviously Burnley and Sheffield United as well. Three of the three teams in the title running race. So we're going to have mm. a big say in that sense. We've also got Chelsea, who's, you know, starting to come into a bit of form as well. And we've also got um, Burnley and Sheffield United, who could be all but down by the time. Well, Sheffield United will be down by the time we play them last game of the season. And Burnley most likely will be very close to being down at the time we play them as well. When you're looking at Villa's running, you've got to also... Put, in, put into account that they've got European football to play as well. They are in the semi-finals of the Europa League, which will come in between their Brighton and Liverpool. So the second leg will be before Liverpool. The mm. first leg will be before Brighton. So if you look at their fixtures, Bournemouth at home, who are no slouches, they're in good form. Chelsea at home, like I said, you know, they're starting to get to grips with things a little bit. Brighton 3-1 in the FA Cup as well. That's true. Uh, Brighton away, who Brighton have lost two games at home all season, so it's not exactly the easiest fixture. Liverpool, who are Liverpool, and then Crystal Palace on the last game of the season, where Oliver Glasson just went to, um, you know, Anfield and won, so that's not a give the game And also, if they're, if they're in the final of the Conference League, maybe they'll have half an hour on that true. if they're going to that last game of the season. That's true. So me and Tim have both done predictions on of how many points both teams uh, we think both teams are going to get so let's have a look at them what's also interesting just looking at the fixtures before we get into that is um, before we next play Villa are going to have played twice mm. so come the North London derby we're going to have three games in hand on yeah. Aston Villa so it'll be very interesting to see how their next two um, games play out and if they don't get wins in those games um, all of a sudden you could be looking at the table we could be like three or four points behind with three games in hand it's true it is true but having said that those three games in hand are Arsenal at home, Chelsea away and Man City at home. Yeah, not the easiest games <laughs> in hand, but they're still games in hand nonetheless. Albeit, and I'll just add into that, I think we... Um we're one of the best teams um, when it comes to getting points off the top teams. We've beaten Liverpool, maybe a bit luckily. We got a draw against uh, Arsenal at the Emirates. We got a draw um, against Man City as well. So we do have a uh, decent form against the top teams this season so far. Yeah, I do think the way the top teams play suits our style of play more. I mean, we struggle a lot more when we play the kind of low block teams. Um, I think that's just the reality. But look, let's get into the predictions. Uh, we'll start off, well, we've got both of them on screen. As you can see, Spurs' predictions. Uh, I've gone for a win. Well, we've both gone for wins against Arsenal Come in the North on. London derby. Uh, I've gone for a draw away at Chelsea. I've gone for a loss away at Liverpool. A win against Burnley. A loss against Man City. And a win against Sheffield United. 
And I've which, gone... Yeah, sorry. Which will leave us on 70 points. Yeah, I've gone for a win against Arsenal. Then I've gone for back-to-back away losses against Chelsea and Liverpool. I can imagine the meltdown after that. Um, a win at home to Burnley, a draw at home to City, and a win away at Sheffield United. Obviously, I've taken our home form into account, which has been quite good recently. I think if you, if we're, if you look at just current home form, I think we're second in the home form table at the moment. Overall, um, in the Premier League this season, I think we're about fourth. But we're in very good home form. I think eight of our last nine we've won. Um, obviously, Chelsea and Liverpool away, we've got horrible records there. Um, and I'm not that confident going into those games. But I think North London derby, um, Arsenal play, I think, three, uh, two more times before they play us. So we've got a bit of a break and maybe we can take that energy and have use that motivation of stopping Arsenal in their title race to really win that North London derby. And then obviously uh, Burnley and Sheffield United, um, we have to win those games, no doubt about it. Obviously City at home, that'll be a very interesting one. A lot will depend on what the state of play is in the title come that game. But we do have a good record at home to City and a good home record. So I think we can get a point off them. How does it work uh, with the title? If Man City need to beat us to win the title that day, will they lift the trophy at Spurs? N- it, not if it they be had the last to, home game. Of if they have, it'll be the last home game. So I don't know if they have a home game on the last day or not. Yeah, I'm not sure either. So um, if they do, then if not, but um, yeah. So that's the kind of how I've seen Spurs. We've actually both gone for Spurs to finish on 70 points, which means Spurs pick up another 10 points from now to the end of the season. Which is a 10 point increase in last season. Uh, we yeah. did finish on 60 points last season, so I think it's a good return. Um, the the kind of my thinking behind these Spurs results, I'm looking at Arsenal and I'm looking at the way they're playing and the results they're getting at the moment, as well as having two games this week and Spurs um, at the end of the week. I think that these there'll be just way too many games for Arsenal to handle all these fixtures all at once. And you're already starting to see a few cracks um, in the Arsenal performances with obviously losses at home to Aston Villa, Bayern Munich dumping them out of the Champions League as well. So I think Spurs with a two-week break, it'll really uh, come in hand and uh, we'll win that game. Chelsea away is always a difficult game, isn't it? It's always a difficult game, as well as Chelsea does do seem to be turning somewhat of a corner. I think no team in the last five games has got more points than Chelsea on the board. But I just feel like we can go there and get a point. I don't think we're going to lose and I think win will be very difficult. Liverpool away is Liverpool away. We'll probably pr- perform really well. You like We do usually up there but then lose the game and they'll probably want a bit of revenge as to how we did beat them at the beginning of the season. Burnley and Sheffield United are, should be givens and Man City at home. Yes, we do have a good record against Man City at home but I think this game is going to mean a lot more to Man City than it probably will mean to us at that stage of the season. So I do think Man City are probably going to do a number on us but it's interesting to see how We've both got to the 70 point mark in yeah, a different way. D- different results. But um, yeah, both, I don't think it's com- we're being completely unfair. I think, you know, it's in terms of the, um, the City, Liverpool, and Arsenal games. I don't think it's that unlikely we pick one, pick up one win uh, out of those three. I mean, you could say, well, not favourite to any of them, so maybe it's unrealistic to win any of them. But, you know, considering how we've played against some of the top sides this season, um, I don't think it's completely out of the realm's possibility to pick up one win. So whether that be uh, against Arsenal, <laughs> Liverpool or uh, Man City, albeit uh, not sure which one, but we won with it being Arsenal. Well, let's go and have a look. <laughs> how, yeah, and ruin their title hopes as well in, in the meantime. But let's look at Aston, the Aston Villa predictions. Both gone for draws in the Bournemouth game. And I think we've probably gone for a similar thinking here where they had a very taxing game out in Lille, out in France on Thursday night. No um, Louise as well. No Louise, weekend. no Zaniolo as well. Going all the way to penalties in a very taxing game against a Bournemouth side who are on form at the moment. In my predictions on in on the ball, I did predict a villain win, but I actually didn't. I didn't know how this Villa game was going to go. I thought they were going to convincingly beat Lille, but it was a very taxing game all the way to penalties. So I feel like Bournemouth can get a point in that game. Yeah, I, I pretty much feel the same way. And Bournemouth are in great form. They're, but and these are the kind of games they've been slipping up on recently. Games where, not easy, but you, they're favourites for expecting them to kind of maybe win. And they've kind of been slipping up a bit. So I've gone for, yeah, draw at home to Bournemouth as well. Uh, yeah. And then uh, they do play Chelsea at home, which is only about three or four days after we play Chelsea. Maybe even less, because we play them on the Thursday, don't we? Then they'll play them on the Sunday. Correct. So it's actually not that big of a turnaround. That's why I've gone for an Aston Villa win, because I feel Aston Villa with the week break, getting Douglas Luiz back, getting a couple of other players back as well. I just feel like... I don't think Chelsea 
you know, Chelsea are doing well, but they're not doing like extremely well where they're not going to drop points from now to the end of the season. I think Villa will provide a good battle for them and I think they'll get the job done. No, sorry, we play, they play Chelsea first. Oh, they the, play Chelsea first. They I play, Chelsea we play Chelsea on first. the Saturday night and then on we play... Well, my Arsenal. predictions are out the window then. <laughs> no, no, so we play, they play Chelsea well on the Saturday night, 8pm. We, we play, play the following Thursday. We play Arsenal on the Sunday and then we play Chelsea Got on the you. Thursday. Got you. Um, I'm still backing Villa to win that game. So obviously Villa will be playing that game off the back of their... Um, uh, they're playing a midweek game? Oh, no, they're not. So have a week break. Chelsea actually playing midweek against uh, Arsenal. Mm. But anyway, I've gone for the draw just because I feel like uh, Chelsea's... The way Chelsea play is quite suited to playing um, this kind of Villa team. I think Villa are going to underestimate them as well, especially being at home. They're really going to go for the win, I feel. Chelsea really destroyed them in the FA Cup. It was a real... Um, uh, demolition job that game I was really impressed with Chelsea and maybe they can take that template into this kind of game obviously Villa will be up for it and they are at home but their home form has been letting them down recently so uh, I've gone for just a draw in this game I've gone for them to drop points at home to a Chelsea team who are currently unbeaten in eight games and then Brighton away um, I've gone for a draw you've gone for a loss obviously with Brighton with incredible home form this season you do expect that they can get something, but just because I think this game just means so much more for Aston Villa than it does for Brighton, I can see them getting something. Yeah, Brighton's a funny one because I think they actually haven't won too many games in their past, like, uh, 12 games or something. I think they three wins in 12, I think it is for them. So they are off the boil a bit. But this is off the back of a European game uh, semi-final. Um, they will have a semi-final the following uh, midweek as well. So I don't know how many changes they might make for this game. And also, I feel like Brighton's a game where you need to be really high energy to compete with them and to, to stop them playing their football. And if Brighton have a free week uh, before that, I just feel like um, they'll go there and... Um, they might get beat. I feel like Brighton could uh, out-football them in this one and I feel like Brighton could get done, um, Villa will get done over. So I've gone for a Brighton win here. Um, Liverpool at home. You've gone for them to beat Liverpool at I home have. in their only win in the last five games of the season. I have. Um, I'm looking at Liverpool at the moment, um, especially I saw them in the second half against uh, Atalanta. I thought they were dreadful in that second half. They seem to be um, running out of, of mentally uh, running out of energy, it seems to me. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if there's a bit of a drop off from now to the end of the season. I think in this game, um, I don't know whether obviously uh, they'll, they'll be off the back of a. Um, trip to Greece but I reckon they'll be really really up for it because obviously it's a massive game against Liverpool they they know they're not going to be underestimating them I think Liverpool might be on the downward turn as well I just got a feeling they're going to um, win at Villa Park against Liverpool in this one yeah I mean I've just gone with the favourite in this game Liverpool um yeah, they haven't been playing well. There's no two ways about it. But I think Liverpool can find a way to beat this Aston Villa side, especially as it's Aston Villa on the back of the semi-final against Olympiacos as well um, in the second leg, which should be pretty taxing for Aston Villa, where Liverpool are out of Europe now. So they'll have that extra bit of rest. And you never know, they might still have some title aspirations at that point as well. Mm. We don't know at the moment, as it looks like the way Liverpool are playing and the way the other teams are playing, it probably won't be that situation that late in the, on in the season. Season, but you still you never know Man City will have that game in hand to come after that against Tottenham so there could be um, smaller points than maybe people will think mm. with that game in hand to come so I just think Liverpool will uh, just about get the job done at, at, uh, at, it's at, at, Villa, no, Park. at Villa Park and then last but not least is Palace away obviously you probably imagine that Villa will be getting ready for the cup final um, against well we don't know who against but in the conference league I've still gone for them to win that game um, and Sim's gone for them to draw. Yeah, I think um, Palace's last home game of the season, um, Glasgow want to end the season really well with momentum building into next season. Obviously, he's starting to get um, a few results recently with them as well, going to make things very difficult. I think these are the kind of teams Villa don't really like to play against, and obviously, if Eze and Elise are available, I can really see them exploiting that Villa high line. And as well, I wouldn't be surprised if they've got half an hour on that cup final if they are there. So I can see them dropping points at Selhurst Park on the last day. It's actually mad. Since Villa lost to Spurs 4-0, they've, they've won two games since then, right? They've won against Wolves and they've won against Arsenal. Mm -hmm. So if you take your predictions into account, in, including what's happened, so in 11 games, three wins, two against Liverpool, Arsenal, and then obviously the Wolves game, <laughs> and the rest not to win. Is that, that 11? Is, Is that huh? 11 games? Yeah. Wow. Since the Spurs game. Mm. 
That's mad. <laughs> yeah, that would be mad form. That would be a big drop off. But I, it's but I'm not I'm not having them losing. I think draws is what's going to cost Villa. I think they. I'm not sure if they have it in them to win them. I'm not saying they're a bad team. They're going to just go on a losing streak. But I think drawing and dropping a lot of points. I can see Villa doing that. Hmm. Well. Uh, that is our prediction. So you've gone for yeah, Villa sim- to get 71. Yeah, I've gone for Villa to pip us to fourth in 71 points and us getting 70. And Sim has gone for us to just pip Villa in fourth and Villa getting 69 and um, Tottenham getting 70. I mean, when you were doing your predictions, did you uh, did you take into account Spurs' fixtures or was it just straight up Villa's fixtures with no bias at all? Of course, no bias. Never any <laughs> bias. Never any bias. None at all. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure we all believe that. But um, look, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Let us know individually how many points do you think Spurs are going to get and Villa get by the end of the season? Who is going to make that fourth spot? But I think like if it still pans out the way that I I predicted it to pan out, I, I as much as I, I yeah I would like to see us play Champions League football, I, I won't be disheartened by the fact that we do finish fifth and get Europa League. What's interesting on the, oh, how I have the, how are my predictions? So we'll be going to the final day, one point, sorry, two points behind, no, one point behind Villa would be going in uh, on the final day and I've got them to bottle it on the final day. That's what I've, that's what I've done. Um, but yeah, look, is what it is. If we get Europa League, that's where we deserve to be. I would argue with the fixtures we have left, if we do get Champions League from this position, we'll deserve that as well because we've got very, very... Couldn't get harder fixtures than we've got. Absolutely. And if we do do that and go on a good run from now to the end of the season, I feel like you can probably take that form into next season as well. Yeah, I think they'll, the squad will really um, use that as something to build on. a lot of belief season. from that. 100%. A lot of belief. So I think it's really important we, in these last in these games against the top three, we really give our all and really show what, we're, what we can do and what we're about. And if we can get results in those games, I think that's a really good build building block because I uh, to say like look what we did against the top three on our day we can match them it's all about next season getting that consistency and getting that week in week out yeah well let us know your thoughts in the top four race in the comments section below that is our two cents worth on it but thank you everyone for joining us today like subscribe and comment and as always come, come on you spurs, spurs.